historical town meeting, the town council meeting. Lord, we ask for your guidance and your direction tonight, Lord. We thank you for our mayor and council. We ask that you continue to give them wisdom and guidance, direction to direct this this community, God, in the way that you would have it to go. We thank you for employees who work so hard and so diligently, oh God, to ensure the continuous uh, serving this community. We thank you for our legal who is here to help guide and those things that it needs to be uh, looked at from a legal standpoint. We thank you for our citizens, God, and we pray that you continue to bless this community. We ask that you continue to guide this community in the way that you have to go. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next item is the approval of the agenda. I want to add one amendment to it, and that is your budget adjustment form that you received. And I think that's the only thing you need to lend for. So with that being said, approval of the agenda with the budget adjustment form amendment. Um, question? Okay. okay. Second. Move. Second. Question. Can you move three down to council decision? Which one? Three? Three. Okay. And I'll Is that okay with everyone? I'm going to pursue uh, number two council decision. Two. Is there something else? No, no, so I have. That's it. All right, so um, just, I think we just move the motion to move those to council. I usually just do it. Mm -hmm. Is that okay to just. Because you have a motion in a second. Oh, okay. we're good. Oh, I did. Um, so it's been moved and second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right, so it's been approved with the movements of items two and three down council decisions. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is just a quick proclamation now from the National League of Cities, what that re their request, and just in recognition of small towns everywhere, small cities, small towns. So I want to quickly read the proclamation. Office of Mayor, Town of Deatonville, National League of Cities, Small Cities Month, June 2023. Whereas the Town of Deatonville, the oldest incorporated African American municipality in the United States, serves as part of the small cities and towns under 50,000 population, the home to millions of Americans and constitute the vast majority of municipalities across the United States. And whereas small cities and towns thrive to strengthen their communities through the provision of services and programs to improve the quality of life for all citizens. And whereas the federal government is an essential partner in the success of small cities and towns, 
and must be encouraged to continue to support programs and legislation that strengthen small communities and where state governments are partners in the success of small cities and towns and must be encouraged to continue to support key programs and legislation that strengthen communities and where as organizations, businesses, and citizens are partners in the success of small cities and towns and must be encouraged to continue to grow their efforts to make small communities a viable choice for people to live in and whereas during these challenging economic times, the need for a renewed intergovernmental partnership to support essential public services is more important than ever to ensure the safety and growth of small town America. And whereas the National League of Cities president and the Small Cities Council of the National League of Cities have declared June 2023 as Small Cities Month, now therefore be resolved that the town of Eatonville, Orange County, Florida, along with Mayor Angie Gardner, Vice Mayor Ronnie Daniels, Council Members Theo Washington, Marlon Daniels, and Wanda Randolph, does hereby proclaim June 2023 as Small Cities Month and Towns, and encourages President Biden, Congress, state governments, organizations, businesses, and all citizens to recognize this event and to work together this month and throughout the year to invest in small cities and towns to better the lives of all citizens. And witness thereof, I have here to, here to set my hand and cause the seal of the town of Eatonville, Florida, be affixed the sixth day of June, 2023. Angie Gardner, Mayor, attested by Veronica L. King, Town. Wake up. Y'all so excited over that one. <laughs> <laughs> Next item, uh, citizen participation. Mrs. King. Yes, we have one, Ryan Novak. Good evening, everyone. Council, Mayor, residents. Ryan Novak, resident. Uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, this is super simple and interesting. Mr. Presley, you've got a budget book right there. And that was one of the main things that I wanted to just quickly talk about. In that, I, I hope that I can urge you guys to uh, just post the budget on the Woodview website so that we can just freely pull it instead of needing to do a, a FOIA request to, to get the budget. Just make it readily available. That, that was actually kind of my, my main thing. And then additionally, uh, when you have an opportunity, I would like to uh, chat and discuss with you to figure out how we can turn this room into a little bit more efficiency through digital uh, setup instead of projector. That way you have proper TVs, legibility, easy access to, uh, to coordinate and move things around. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda for items number one, approval of town council meetings for May 16th and also Item number four, approval request for Duke Energy easement. It's removed. Second. It's removed and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. All right, consent agenda is approved. Next item, council decision approval request for the memorandum of understanding for the Juneteenth weekend. So if you so I'm going to ask for a motion if you want to discuss it. Well, Are you going to present it? Well, motion. Question. I have a discussion. We want to talk about it. So we yeah. can we can go ahead and move it. Second, and then for for questions, we'll discuss it. Yes. So approval of memorandum. Is anyone going to? You can say it. Yeah, I just second. Okay. It's so it's I mean, getting. So moved. Second discussion. All right, then moved and seconded. Councilwoman Randolph. Okay. Um, I just want to make myself clear about the Juneteenth celebration. I highly support the Juneteenth celebration because I, I am a part of the Freedom Committee, um, the Freedom Celebration that's going to be on that Monday. However, in planning, planning. I, understanding about the planning and the other activities that's going to take place. I was not aware that it was this um, memorandum of understanding was asking the town to pay $10,000 of the town's money for the event. Is, is, that, is that correct? 
Yes, this is for the parade portion of that event where if we were to put on that parade uh, and take care of the MOT as well as the uh, services, the general public services for that event, and that's the cost along with public safety. Now, it was my understanding when we were planning this that this was, I understood that we had a, or we were going to enter into a memorandum of understanding. Mm -hmm. Well, here we are in a council meeting, and these are the kind of things that needs to be corrected. Mm -hmm. We had a council meeting. Here the event is two weeks from now, and it's like we have our back up against the wall, and we're going to use funds, and we're supposed to make a decision at the council meeting before the event. There was plenty of time to discuss this ahead of time. And I'd like to know why this was not presented ahead of time so we would be able to work out any issues that we have. And, and the only thing I can tell you is that we, when we received, as soon as we received this memorandum where we could review it, we had the council, uh, I'm sorry, the town, uh, town attorney review it, and upon review, we put it on the agenda. I believe we received this, and I'll have to go back to my notes, but I do believe we received this uh, uh, May 18th is when I actually received the full memorandum portion of it. As far as the cost assessment, staff did do the cost assessment and say this is what's required. And based off the conversation with the planning committee for the group uh, in a previous meeting, uh, there was the understanding or at least the assumption that the town will cover the parade portion which is the public services and the public safety side. I understand that, Mr. Pastor, but you have to understand as the council. Absolutely. We have to approve this as council. Mm -hmm. And I think you should have been much better notice about the whole transition about this. And I only have a question for the attorney. Attorney, is this is the correct way to handle this particular situation here? With the memorandum of understanding that we're taking $10,000 out of the budget to fund this event. I just want to make sure that we're doing the right thing. In terms of the, the budget transfer, yes, if you choose to fund it. In terms of the correct way, you know, memorandum of understanding is a way. A contract is another way. Um, and if you do it internal, obviously you don't do any of those things. So, so the answer is yes, it is a right way to do it. It's not the only right way to do it. Okay, are we within the guidelines for the procurement? On, on this, it's just just basically we're just going to take it out of the line, out of budget, and and um, pay for the expenses. Because even at that, I know I may be talking, you know, both ways here. But the uh, breakdown, Mr. Presley, I don't know the breakdown here for the police and fire and all the other categories. On here, ten thousand dollars. Where is the calculation? For instance, you have fire and police you have $3,100. So how many of our staff employees are we going to be using for these services? You have public work service employees, you have uh, $2,000. Maintenance and traffic permit, that's uh, $1,500. You have the, the MOT closing, that's another 12, and then you got golf carts and what have you, that's $2,300. So where is the breakdown as far as the employees? And do we also have, uh, to be, make sure that we're covered, do we have the commercial liability insurance that's gonna cover? The group does have that insurance which they have turned in to staff. In regards to the breakdown, this is the same formula that was used for the MLK and is using the same exact number of service providers that was used for the MLK parade. Uh, I, if, if I knew you wanted the actual breakdown, I pulled the numbers based off the cost estimates uh, that was used, but we do have the active breakdown. I do believe you sent over an email today uh, for that, and I can get that information to you. But it's the same exact uh, public safety plan and public service plan that was used for the MLK that was he uh, held earlier this year. Okay, I just want to be transparent yes, in this whole issue. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I think I basically covered all of what I was going to say for now. Yes, so, I have, I have one question. So, the gospel celebration, who's that issue? Mm -hmm. 
So you don't think you have conflict in this vote? Mm -hmm. I vote on this? I mean, you're part of this group, so wouldn't that be a conflict of interest that you don't know? It, 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 it depends. Um, if in any way there is a financial benefit, then there would be a potential conflict for a vote. But I don't know if there's a financial interest, and no one has asked me that question. I, I just managed you. No, oh. when you say a financial interest, can you explain that? Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, it, it, it was the, the rule, the ethics rules have been clarified regarding conflict of interest. If, for example, you're working for, and I'm just going to say something, a charity, where you're you're attempting to get, uh, or, or you're a charity of which you're a member, like you're a, you're a member of a volunteer organization, and they come before this body to get funding, then as long as you don't receive a financial benefit, the way the rules are written, it's not a special private gain or loss, and you don't have a conflict. That being said, people have declared a conflict simply because they wanted to avoid the appearance of anything looking funny, because a lot of times, notwithstanding what I just said, people don't understand it and they think it looks bad, but the legal standard is, does it inure to your financial benefit or does it keep you from incurring a loss of something? And if the answer to that is yes, then you have a conflict. Well, I don't have a conflict. Question? Yes, Councilman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I, um, I have a couple questions. First, I remember asking, was there any financial implications to the time that I was told no? Actually, what you were told was the only thing that I knew about was the MOT for the parade and anything associated with the parade. Yes. We can go back to full record. I was told no, but I, I'll move past that. Attorney, have you had a chance to look at the MOU? The one for the Juneteenth? Yes. Our off I didn't personally, but our office did. I was just going through my emails to find it. And I, I saw I was I saw an email that was sent by, by Mr. Smith that said there are things that could be more specific. I do not know what happened after that, and I'm not saying nothing did. I, I have to look and see if there's been any response to that email. I just don't I'm, I'm, I don't see one, but there might have been one. Okay. His uh, specifics were in regards to the financial portion. Right. Was not included in the MOU. The financial portion of this was what we would incur if we are to. Uh, be a part of the parade as a town, which requires the general services of public safety and public services to take place. So the council would have to make a decision if they're going to support handling that portion of the parade, which all those costs are incurred. Not, it does not have any cost impact on the town from any of the other events that's taking place outside of just the parade portion that requires the MOT and public safety. My, my next, my next concern. It's coming out of line item 0010574574901. So I researched. Um, there's no back, it is on the website, but it is on the website from the finance section. Um, and when I pulled the budget, upon the special events, upon the five cents for expenditures, I looked at that reference number and it shows $25,000 in a line item. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of perplexed about it because during the whole budget cycle, I was asking about special events and how it should be broken down in a certain way, and that never was presented. And now all of a sudden, I see it approved on our funding budget that we never approved, that I've never seen it approved on. So that's a grave concern to me. Um, so can, can I respond to that? Whatever, sir. Okay. And as soon as I came, I, so I came up today to make sure I as for all of the budget workshops and all that, and that line item doesn't show in our budget packets nowhere. So when I did more research into that, it is my understanding Ms. Gibson was here as well, the 25000 that was allocated was for the MLK uh, event. That has 23665 on the website. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council and Citizens. Um, that 25000 that we approved in the budget, that was your, the Robert Wood Foundation. We talked about in the budget workshop, and it should be in the minutes. The Robert Wood Foundation, you asked council, someone on council asked where that money was sitting, why it was in the reserve, it needed to be put in. So that's, that's, that's what the two was there. MLK and the Robert Wood Foundation. So you're saying we approved that during the budget cycle? Yes. But it's not in any of the budget workshop sheets. So how did it get in there? It was it was there. We talked about it. I have all of them right there. Okay, I'll go back and pull my minutes. It was in there because it was discussed 
that we were going to move the special event into the general fund. And we talked about the you know, special event used to be in its own fund by itself. We talked about moving the special event into the general fund. Never, Mr. Gibson. I, I know for sure I was the main proponent of saying that and special the, events need to be broken down. And I said if it's MLK, it needs to be a dollar amount. If it's Founders Day, it needs to be a dollar amount. If it's Juneteenth, it needs to be a dollar amount. And I kept getting the run around, and that never was put in the budget. Well, so I want to know how it got in the budget here, and now we're trying to pull money to pay for something that I don't recall. Okay, but this was the Robert Wood Foundation. I will go back and find what we're discussing there. We could it, it could have been in the workshop where it wasn't recorded. We don't we don't do minutes in the work budget workshop. But, but if that's the case, it would have been it have showed up in our budget worksheets throughout the, the process. It should have. I just didn't put this in here. This this was proved. You can go on the website. You can just go to the. I was gonna say was that. And this yes, was it was there. Kind of, was that? Um, it was discussed in the actual proposed budget that was approved by council. No. When it was approved, it was approved in there. So on the workshop number four, it, it would be in there. Correct. I'm talking about. How many about workshops we had? We had a whole bunch of workshops. I wouldn't have put that in there. We had a whole bunch of rich shots. We talked about the Robert Wood Foundation. So, so why wouldn't it be in the workshop where we was having a, a balanced budget? It should be. I'll go back and look at myself because I'm not going to put nothing in a budget without no permission. And we talked about the Robert Wood Foundation. So some of y'all asking about the Robert Wood Foundation, why we haven't done with it. One, one of the things I'm, I'm only confirming, I understand about the workshop portion, Mr. Uh, Councilman Daniels, but I, I'm saying when the actual proposed budget for the year, she's saying that that was on there and it was approved by the council. How it was missed, I don't know. How how would it be inserted in? Because we started with a budget and made updates the whole time. So in order for that to be put in there, it would have to be noticed to us that we're adding this into the budget. Okay. And not somebody doing somebody's business. But, but I guess no, my I question mean, is, Robert, what, that money is, was in there. It, it wasn't yeah. like it was put in. It was always been the there. money was always there for years. Yeah, within the last year's budget. Yeah. It was in an every it was in a it was in a reserve yeah. account. It was in a reserve. Okay, so and you all brought it up in the meeting because so it wasn't a special thing, right? Correct. It was in reserves. It was reserve, and you said, "Bring it out of it. We're going to bring it out of here. Why, why is sitting in there when it needs to be used?" So we say we're going to put it in special events because the money is is the Robert Foundation is for the town council to decide how they want to use. it. And when did that money in there? Because I, I remember asking. And I'm, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you recall. Mm -hmm. I remember saying what all the grants want outlined, so we know the exact grant amount that's there for each grant, right? Right, and this is not a grant, Ms. Gibson. So you're telling me it's been in the budget the whole time? Yes, I wouldn't. I want to reason why. Yes. But you just said it was in general. This, this, this is in the general. This is general. We have we have a general fund account, and you have a general fund reserve. So you moved it from the general fund reserve where that the money where that you gave permission to take it out of there, and we said in the but I'm going to find it because I'm not going to put nothing in that right. we don't say. And but I'm going to find it. And what's right to me is that in the tail end of the budget that's on the website. If you look at the numbers, that means that was entered in at the tail end of. I'll pull the stuff. I'm not going to put nothing in. So the Robert Wood Foundation will discuss doing our workshop. I'm just, I don't, I'm just saying, I don't remember. Okay, well, I'm a, I wouldn't I'm go put nothing in. I don't remember, because we were, I was there. We're all, right? We're all okay. I think. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't remember. Okay, I well, remember. I'll go back and look, okay? Okay. Okay, because I'm not going to go in and add something to a line without permission. I've been here 20 years, I wouldn't do that. Anybody else have a question? Uh, I, I, I don't have any. It was before my time, so I can't prepare for I mean, I guess my my thing is, regardless of what it wasn't like money, but just this this whole conversation seems weird to me. Um, but I do want to ask. Would you like to say something? Yes. Um, oh, so much minimum. But I'm asking, but this is going to inform a motion, maybe clear the things up before the vote is taken, too, if you don't mind. Is that okay? 
If someone has information and is willing to come up and provide it to Absolutely. you, you can ask. Yeah, they're a resource to you. So that's what I'm asking. It's not a public period. You're looking for information. Right. Just like when you turn to me. Okay. Thank you. Hello, Mayor, Council Members, and Citizens. If you guys have any questions about the Juneteenth events, I'm here to clear up anything that you may have. Okay. But initially, it was stated uh, by you that uh, you have a $200,000 budget for the Juneteenth. So you all have not raised the, any funds for for the ten thousand the ten thousand dollars that the town has to pay. So you don't have enough funds to pay for these services. I have never given a two hundred thousand dollar budget um, for any event. I said I had two hundred volunteers, but I, I don't have a two hundred thousand dollar budget for this event. <coughs> this event I quoted was maybe twenty five to thirty thousand dollars on paper. Okay. So, okay. Um, for the event, we were looking for sponsors, and then we partnered with the town with the parade portion. So we asked the town if they had any money allocated or if they can help out in any way. And then the town said, throughout our meetings, this is not just the first meeting, I came and gave you guys just a brief. And then I met with you, with your council, I met with um, the cops, I've met with the public works department, I've met with the Juneteenth committee down in Maitland. So each time we grow and we learn more about the event. So when we partnered with the town, the town said that they could handle the mm -hmm. items associated with doing a parade. Mm -hmm. You know, so I take I I take the brunt of that. Okay. But do I still want a a parade? Yes. <laughs> I mean, the town should have a parade. Mm -hmm. And now the pub, the the police and fire services. I don't know if anywhere these if if these fees can be cut. But, you know, perhaps do we need the golf carts? Can we get half? You know, get one? You know, can we cut some of the items? Because number one, I don't want to discourage you because mm -hmm. I thank you for supporting and being willing to put the, the effort into this. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of effort. Yes, this. it was. Um, when you met with Ms. Robinson, she probably wasn't thinking about all this because Correct. Because I asked her to meet with y'all so that we knew you had the support of the town for the parade. Correct. But again, so I don't know what adjustments we need to make to the numbers, anything we need to, if there's any, the only main two things I see here that we can would be the permit and the barrel the MLT closures. You know, so those look like two hard, hard fees. Um, public work service workers, the budget is, it's part of their their um, pay, Correct. right? For them, for them to work, and then for police and fire services. That's mandatory from the MOT to have a certain amount of police officers for the event. For the event. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. My, my number one question is: Do do the council want them to have a parade? That's my my thing. I'm, do we want them to have a parade? Yeah, I'm supporting it because that's something we need to have. I mean, it goes back to municipality, and that's something we need to keep. Keep on, mm -hmm. and if the money never to use for special events, use the money. I mean, we've been holding that money for years, twenty-five thousand dollars. That I was thinking that it was put somewhere else, but it's always been sitting there. So if it was bought to us to use for special events, use that special events. That's I mean, but this council don't want to have it. Then that's something totally different. But I support it. Uh, Mr. Press. How many police officers are we using for this? Mm -hmm. What we say, five. It's just Chief, they were using the whole department. But well, how many staff members actually? Yeah. 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 The, whole the, department. Whole department. the whole department. Basically, what we did is we have every intersection covered, and what we do, we ask Orange County to uh, partner with us and help us with the uh, the covering of the parade. They have agreed to do that like they deal with MLK, mm -hmm. but that's along with all our officers on as well. So all 13 of our officers will be on as well, and that will be overtime for those officers. So this $3,100 to cover the overtime for it, yes, right. correct. Mm -hmm. So we don't owe the county? No, no. Right. no. that's the sheriff bears that burden. 
Okay, now what about the public works employees from the town? This it's, is from the it town. Will be, it will be three employees from, from the town. Three employees. Three employees. So three employees with two thousand dollars. Yes, because the, because of the hours, they, they open up early, they get the grades, and then they come down and close down. So I have three, basically from what was pulled, mm -hmm. it was three employees that was one of the system. How much are they getting paid an hour? With three employees for two thousand dollars. I can send you a breakdown of it. Yeah, I mean, you know, when we their hourly rate is seven. Well, it depends <coughs> on the individual, but I can send you over what their hourly rates are for. I need to. Okay. I'll buy Twitter. I've been trying to ask. Oh yes, uh, Councilman uh, Washington, that's really your opinion on the uh, parade. I can see where you would like to have one, but uh, I had other plans. If you know, I was asked, you know, how we would want to celebrate Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't expecting this. I, I thought this. I thought the group would have raised the money needed um, for this for their event. Um, you can't want to have a party at my house and get the last minute tell me I got to buy liquor. You know, what I'm saying you have to inform me of what's going on so I can prepare myself and prepare this council. You know, for what they want to do. If it was up to me, I would like to have a a festival I did in the park. If it was up to me. Inviting everybody over so that we as a town can capitalize, everybody can benefit. That was just my opinion. That's why I didn't I didn't think we would have to have any money with this group. I thought they would raise and have everything they needed to perform this guilty celebration. Are oh, y'all playing something in the field? Y'all have vendors? We have we asked to use the field and Orange County Public Schools told us that we could not use the field to do an event. But when I presented the presentation to the uh, council, you guys all agreed and was um, for the event happening. And I remember uh, Vice Mayor Daniels asked to have a pig roast. So what we did is. I said we had one before. No, you, you, what happened was I said that we were having the parade and you said this was not enough for Eatonville. So then you said, can we have something else a little more? I remember we had a pig roast or something. So what we did was we added a food court, we added nonprofit vendors for our education portion, and then we also have added a kid zone to give the town more things. And that's not on the town, we are completely doing that ourselves. The event has raised money. We have been speaking in the background about the partnership. As soon as we went in partnership, I asked what can the town bring to it? They said that they can take care of the MOT plan. So that was off of my agenda and my budget because I thought that would be taken care of. So I was raising money for other things for the event. Now that it has just come across your desk, I can't stand, I, yeah, I can't tell you why it's just come across your desk, but I've been working on this plan since last year. Let me just comment one second. I just want to have an understanding. I know how hard this group really worked. And I'm, I'm just being very transparent and, and out there. Um, sometimes when we plan things and we do things, um, I don't think it was done in the way that it should have been done because it's, to me this is untimely. But I know we want the Juneteenth event. I like the Juneteenth event. And I think it's something that we can do here in Eatonville. And I highly support it. Um, but I, I, I just want to, I just want, how the way this turns out, I just want to be a lesson learned. Yes. To anyone, when you come before the council, you have to come here in a timely manner, have all, Mr. Preston, have all of the documents for the cost for what we're paying for. You haven't seen any insurance. We got to do better as far as doing a presentation that's going to be correct and accurate. So we'll take care of the business that needs to be taken care of the town to make sure that we are also protected. And so I know we put a lot of emphasis on MFK. It's, it's an already structured um, event. Mm -hmm. This can more or less follow the same format. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that the town is going to be doing on an annual basis, we need to go ahead and, and take care of that too. If it's something that we want to do on an annual basis and not just piece it like I this. Agree. Piece it here, this group coming here, this group coming, you know, like that. So we just need to make sure that we have something that's going to be consistent uh, uh, with the town as uh, MLK. That's point of clarity. When you brought up the uh, parade, 
I was making reference to the other Juneteenth that we had and that they had it paid books out for, I think about that budget time was like 5,000 to have it out there in the park. It was more inclusive of having the whole community to come out. That was the main thing, like to give the citizens something to say, you know, we, we have this, you know, we, we have our, you know, we come out, we eat, we fellowship and have entertainment out there. And that was for five grand, you know, what they did then. That was my reference to that. And as far as using the park, when we partner together, the mayor's voice and maybe a phone call can go a little bit further than, you know, you asking. I don't know if that makes sense or not. You know, when, we, when we stand as a board, if you have, you know, we partner together, and when we stand as a board, hey, email would like to use the, and not your, you know what I'm saying, not your organization, when we said as a town meeting, okay, can we use the, you know, little section over here to have our team? I think that would have a little bit more weight. And then you have PC that couldn't have it there, but they went down on the corner of that destiny road and had their thing. So, you know, it's, it's more ways of, I guess, you know, having inclusion, everyone, you know, and like I said, I'm not against the break, I just didn't know it was going to be 10 grand, and I didn't know that, you know, we was going to have to come up with this. I thought you had it all, all covered. Um, just to clarify, our organization didn't ask for the land. The town of Eatonville asked for the land. They've been working with us in great partnership, and the town of Eatonville was told no, not our organization. Stand correct. All right. Is there any more questions? So ultimately, I do support Juneteenth. There's a but. I know if we go back and we listen, I asked several times was there any bus implication and was told no. And then to see this ten thousand some dollars come up was a red flag. And then mm -hmm. my other flag is seeing twenty five thousand in a budget that I did not see before. Is complete red flags to me. So I support the event, but I cannot support you taxpayer dollars for something that I don't even know if the budget is correct. And then having this come up at the last minute—that that's that's hard. That's hard for me to swallow as as the elected person. Now, are you going to be able to get clarity on that on that budget when you yeah, get to look? Because I think those cousins. You know about that being just put in, or I'm not saying being put in, but I don't remember talking about Robin Woods. And, you're, and we're also in our audit right now, so I'll be able to clarify okay. what they have on record as well. So I will definitely call them back at the next council. I just want to close it out by picking back off of what Councilwoman Randolph said: Is next year can we have this taken care of? Can this be allocated in the budget where we have a parade? where we have a festival, where we have whatever it may be. I just wanted to highlight Eatonville. And we usually have a Juneteenth event. No one stepped up, so I stepped up. And the key word here is collaboration. Because we didn't have a budget, I collaborated with each, each individual, each organization around town to have it in this historic town and to give Eatonville that highlight. So by you guys giving the MOT alone, closing down the roads, getting the barricades, and paying for the workers to work the road is all that Eatonville is taking care of. That is it. That is how much the MOT costs. That is how much your Martin Luther King parade costs. That's how much you spend on your tax dollars when you spend it with Martin Luther King. So we can do the same thing for this historical black holiday. So, so that is all you guys are covering. When it comes to the field, when it comes to the festival, when it comes to the vendors, when it comes to parade participation, when it comes to floats, when it comes to radios, we cut the golf carts, we cut the lights, we're taking care of the banners, we're taking care of signage, we took everything. Eatonville said that they will partner and help with the MOT and what was required by the MOT, which requires officers and which requires public works in that town. I can't bring other workers to come work your town. So, so question for you, of this 10000 how much do you have? How much do I have of this yeah, 10000 We make. We don't make any. No, that going okay. straight how to. Much, how much can y'all? I'm trying to work with you. How okay. much can y'all contribute towards? Towards the ten thousand. It's not in our budget. As soon as the town said they were taking care of that, that was not in our budget. We have other things in our budget. And then here it is. It's the seventeenth. We're two weeks out, and you're asking me for ten thousand out of my budget. So, so what I would say, like I, I'm gonna stand with what I said, that I can support you in taxpayer dollars. Well, personally, I get five hundred dollars towards. Well, using taxpayer dollars, I can't do it. It's not fair to the, um, the citizens who can do that. 
Was so it, you're saying it's a tiny bit. Yeah. I mean, that's a tiny bit. I mean, those tests go to more. I mean, that's what tests go to more. We never got to the town. point that this was an actual town event. <laughs> we never got to that point. We never put this on the floor. We never voted for this. We, we, we said that we would support it. That's what we said. But we did not make this a town event. I think anything goes on your community, it, we get blamed because for P, we get blamed, we get blamed for Zor, we get blamed for everything because else. Because you can have another organization I mean, to come up here and they can do the same thing, and we will have to treat everyone the same. You cannot be uh, showing uh, dis uh, discrimination and partiality towards one group. If you get another group here that comes here and they want the same uh, courtesy, what are we going to do as a town? We have to be very careful about these kinds of things because you're setting yourself up for a violation of using the public's money to fund events. Well, use if we didn't raise the money. So that's what people donate money to special events. They want you to use that money for special. I remember we had a problem back in the day with MLK. People used to sponsor MLK and put money into that fund for MLK, mm -hmm. and they felt like it wasn't used right. So now we have a special event fund that saying that in the event you put on, you come out that special event account. So it don't matter who comes in, we want to participate in what they're doing, that's what we should do. If we don't, we'll tell them from the get-go, when they started years ago or a year ago, months ago, we're not supporting that. But we are, you're involved in it somewhere, and we're involved in it because we got to get MOT for a parade on our streets. But, but so, for Council of Washington, and, and I'll do fairness, if you, I'll, I'll choose my word, <laughs> During the budget process, I stated about special events that you can't just put a bucket out there and say special events, $50,000. I'm using that for example. You need to break it down. So if MLK was $10,000, who else playing MLK? They know they got at least $10,000 to start off. Who's doing uh, Founders Day? They know they got $10,000. That's how a budget should be done. And that's why I say we have to properly do things because now we get into this motion now of showing favoritism or, or not following our own rules. Because what about now if um, somebody else comes and say they want to do something? It's a fund. You have a special event fund. One point simple. What was in the account? What was in the budget for special events before the twenty five thousand? What was in there? I don't have the budget for I'm gonna look at Mr. Trainer. I don't know what's in the budget. I, don't have the I didn't hear you say that again. What was in the budget before ten thousand dollars I mean before the twenty five thousand showed up or whatever it is uh, what was, what was in the budget? How much is in the budget? Is only 25 in there? It was 25 in the, the MLK. Board. It was 23. 23, 65 well, according to the website. So it's 20, it's 23 plus 25? Well, it's 23. But, but, but I'm just saying, Councilman, going through our budget workshop, special events never showed up in there. So how did it show up in our final budget? Um, can we? I always thought special events in the budget. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I, I I, what, at this point, at this point, I don't think that anyone is, anyone, I don't think there's anyone that did not know that, um, that we were doing, or that I wanted a parade. And if there was no one that stepped up, and if I said, hey, Miss, Miss Robinson, you know, we want a Juneteenth parade then the town would have been using resources to put everything together and replace the work that they've been doing for this parade. I mean, so it kind of boils down to, do we want a parade or not? I mean, we, we, we did across, across the board raises that weren't in a budget. So I, so I understand doing things inside and outside of a budget, but this, this, I was approached, loved the idea, asked can we support with the parade part. I knew about the MOT in that process. And it's nothing else really to be said. It's just a matter of a vote at this point. Mayor, why didn't you come back to the council and present this portion, what you're telling us now? This is the first time you actually commit, uh, made a comment about what you're saying now. No, it's not. No, it's not. I made it the same night that Councilman um, Daniels asked, what is the budget for the town? And I said, whatever's associated with doing a parade, I know we have the MOT. It's not the first time. And that was a while ago. So you're saying, you know we have MOT? 
I mean, I know that you have the MLT and you do a parade because we just done the, the So you MLT. said we will cover the MLT or we cover it all of it? What were you saying? Tell me so I can have At that point, I did not know about any cost, the, the amount. You asked me about a budget. When you asked about a budget, you're asking about an amount. I said, whatever. Just go back to the video. Whatever is associated with the MOT. So is police associated with MOT? It's required. Traffic, yeah, traffic, yeah, traffic, traffic, yeah, traffic, yeah, traffic, control. But we pay the MOT. We pay the MOT. Then I understand what you're saying. I, but I think the That's so twelve hundred dollars compared to ten thousand. Yeah. What I was going to ask now, if, if the case is that of the amount, is there an amount you would approve? Uh, from the special events to go towards this to uh, see what we can work with uh, the committee to to cut the cost at this point, if you would consider it. Uh, what is that amount? I just need to know the amount so I can have staff work with them to, uh, if it's 5,000, we're saying we're not going to do 10,000, if it's 5,000, then we'll go back with them and we'll figure out uh, what we can, what we got to have and what we can have to uh, associate it to have a grade. So that's my question to council at this point on that. Is there a set a different amount you would approve for? Just trying to find a solution. Well, I think because it came up the way that it did, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of unfair to the council at this point. I'm willing to go halfway. Mr. Shepherd says that it's legal for right. us to spend the money, correct? Right. It is, it is legal to spend the money on this. It just needs the approval of the council mm -hmm. to spend the funds towards it. And you need to decide what that amount is. The council needs to, to agree on what amount you will put towards it. So if you're saying uh, you're 5000 then we just need uh, council to, to take a motion. Okay. But what is well, that going to do? We're, we're not being realistic. And, and I hear you, but we're not. We're not being. We're not being realistic. Just, Mr. President, just the whole. Let's just go ahead and take care of it. That's my opinion right now at this moment. But the next time that someone comes before the council, they don't come here on time and do what they're supposed to do in their part. I'm not going to support it. So I'm going to make that known. Council Member Randolph, were you sitting in some of those early I'm, meetings, though? I'm, I'm talking to Mr. President. But you were in the meeting. I'm in the meeting, but I'm telling so you, you know about the I'm giving you full support. All right, thank what you. What else more thank do you, you want? But because I want it to be clear. Though. It is clear. I want it to be clear. I mean, everyone up here should support this parade. I just said it. Thank you. You, you did. Okay. okay. Then I just said it, Ms. Preston? Yes. Thank okay. You. Thank you. And, and it, I would suggest that we need to come up with a special event application moving forward. So this is for the Yeah, that's over here. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to say it needs to be enforced and used before we can get to the stage. So it's been moved, moved in second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. So the eyes have it. The next item on the agenda thank is. Thank you, Council. Oh, thank you. The next item on the agenda is the award of this for Eastville Town Hall Group and HVAC Records. Would you like to? If we have any questions on our course, uh, we went through the full procurement process of uh, invitation to bid. Uh, we proceeded forward as your notes do show that this procedure or this product will take place of replacing the entire roof, along with adding in additional drainage and replacing four of the six AC units on this building that are in uh, despair at this point. So we we'll are looking for council's approval to proceed forward with. Uh, the award of it, uh, and we also, uh, if we get to that pet level, we'll come back and do the budget amendment that is required to meet the market value of this project to take place. Who was the other bids? Uh, there were no other bids that met the criteria or some submitted their documents for the invitation to bid. So we only had one bid? We only had one bid. How long has it been out? How long was it out? It was out for 30 days. Well, this is not a long time ago. It's been legal for years, so I don't know why it's been out for 30 days. 
All right, so there's a motion on the floor. Approval of award of bid for Eastville Town Hall roof and HVAC. Is there a motion? Second move. Is, is, is it? So, so it's been moved and second question. Uh, my, my question is, is it possible? Could this have been separated? Because you have roof and you have HVAC, correct? Correct. So the person who put in for this is the company. Correct. So they're going to do third party to get an HVAC company, correct? They're going to do a subcontract. So this will be more money added on top of it because they have to go to a third party. Would it be more cost effective to bid out the roof and then bid out the HVAC as two separate things? Uh, it was recommended, this is once again prior to me coming in, prior to my coming in, it was bid it out. It was bid out separately and the prices were not good. We have two big range. The reason why is because of the specs that were done in four. It was not clarified. It just said redo the roof. It had no specifications for it for us to you know, make sure the right design was there. And so uh, at that time, uh, it was uh, prior to me coming in, Mr. English, the board's director, they uh, worked with the CPH engineering to come up with specifications for the roof and the ACs. It was found out that the current ACs and the structures and the stabilization was not properly done. Uh, and so in order to do that, there was a spec put in place. And in order to do it properly, it had to be done simultaneously. Now you can do them separately, and I think you would actually have a higher cost if you did these two separately. But bringing them together brings in a better cost because it's a competitive uh, process for that. Well, something you said in the office that was starting to talk, you said that the information that was the specs were flawed from mm -hmm. the beginning. So if the specs are flawed, of course, you're going to have a wide range because the specifications weren't the same all the way across. So you had different people coming in. So if we would have posted it right, then everybody would know what those specs were, and then they could bid. So I think, could we go back? Would, would it hurt us to go back for 30 days and put it back out and see what it is? And what are, what are we seeing? Is it the council's decision to separate the two? Is that what you're requesting to put it back out on? I would like to see it separated. I would like to see what the cost comparison is. Okay, do we have those old bids? That, yes. So that, to me, that would be good information to have in there with it so then we could actually go and see it. Right. The only reason why I put it because this was actually done through the, the state's procurement process, which is an invitation to bid, where it goes on demand starting is put out to several uh, newspaper, it's put out to the newspaper to actually review it. And so we follow those same procedures for this procurement process that happens with most municipalities in that situation. So from, from your recollection, how much was it the other ones when it was bid out separately? About how much was Just it? for the roof by itself without, um, without the ACs, uh, the one bid came in at 200, over 200,000, and then one came in at 110. So it was a big disparity there. So we were concerned uh, staff was concerned at the time whether they were going to get an actual full spec out roof or what it would require. Right. So if the roof was 200, what was the bid on HVAC? There was no other bids at that time on HVAC. That would put it. So it was separate. When I say it was separately, all they bid out was an actual roof. This has this, if you're looking for the actual HVAC for this current roof, yeah. 61,000 per uh, unit. And how many units? Four. So that's another 224. Plus 200, so we're looking at um, 424. Yeah, more, yeah. You're saying if we're separate. Right now we're getting it at uh, a total of 3,383. Uh, yeah, and I also have letters that you should have received today, also from our engineering company, that the, the prices uh, that we receive from the tabulation are within the current market value. Uh, and our uh, current engineer has uh, permitted to sign documents stating that. They reviewed it. We checked out all of the uh, actual uh, vendors as well as the specs to make sure it meets the qualifications. I know we looked at those ACs back in the past. I know it was pretty high. Just do AC. But you really can't put ACs on there until you get a new roof. 
Correct. So it'd be a waste of money. So if we could go all the roof, then the AC. Because the one guy would never say, they used to put a new AC on this bad roof. You know, so. And that was the suggestion. That's why I put up the So I understand that. Um, get it all done at one time. Because I know it's high. I think it's, you know, some, had some numbers back in the past, boys. And it was just for AC, it was high. Mm -hmm. In the 200 dollars. So. All right, are there any other questions? All right, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor of the bid, say aye. Approval award of the bid, say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. So, Attorney Shepard, I do have a question for you. Though. Yes, ma'am. If, if these, if they're not replaced, um, when I came in, it was already issued. Mm -hmm. And we did put proposals out there, and those proposals <coughs> came back all over the place. That's why yeah. we went to this. But if, now we're at a safety concern. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to wait again. So. I, I'll just, I'll talk to you later. Okay. So my, my question is only now that we know that it did pass, what, what is the request or the direction of the council to proceed? I would say that's the same. Rebid it? I would say rebid it. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, so if you said no, I mean, at least give, what is it that you want, though? Just, what is the concern? Oh. He said rebid. Rebid. That, I mean, that's yeah, one. So rebid. Rebid. Okay. Well, we'll see how many more about takers. All right. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is approval of the town of Eatonville organizational chart right. and new proposed personnel changes. Uh, again, thank you, uh, Aaron. Uh, this we had a workshop back on the 16th to uh, revisit this item, so we just bring it back to uh, review uh, to make sure this is what the council would like to see for with the uh, organizational chart uh, proposal, uh, which included two new, two new proposed provisions to add in the current limit cycle, as we stated in that. And so we brought that back before the council to their approval on. Yes, I know you saw the email. Is there any merit to the email that the budgetary requirements first before we get those positions So today we were just actually approving the, the proposed positions as we stated in that workshop for those new positions. Only two of them will be included in this budget cycle. And once we got to the procedure where it was approved and we got positions, we would bring back uh, for the budget amendment portion of but you see how the email made sense. You yeah. know, and, 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 and I was, did you see my response? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, I was making sure. so we understood what the questions were, mm -hmm. but we also were trying to make sure it was clarified that this, all these questions were brought up in the actual workshop, and we proceeded on the basis of what the council gave us to do at that point, was to make those uh, provisions that you see in there uh, for the council to review and to uh, proceed. So, yeah. then, so then yes. are, are we adjusting? And just do it for the new proposed personnel changes then and not the organizational chart? It was the organizational chart uh, with with only the two proposed positions going into the fiscal year of 22 23. Right. So there's no change to what is being placed on the floor now? Okay. Yes. Is there any okay. matter to the charter, what an organizational charter being more of a mayor council than a strong mayor type of? No, we reviewed that as well, and I was going that it is definitely based on what our charter requires. And if you look at the um, the documents that were associated, you will see that it showed that it was inconsistent with, or it was also along with what the city of Orlando and Baca does in the same format. Okay. It was in compliance with that. And both of those towns are strong. Strong. Yeah, definitely. Do we have a job description for operation development? No, we didn't include that because that will be presented in the budget workshop. Those those positions were not being included in this portion. Human resources should have been included. Was not. No. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mayor Hall, Mayor Hall, 
this impressive. If I understand you correctly, you say the operations director is not included with this? Mm -hmm. And the other one, the chief of staff? The, the chief of staff was included in, in the proposal for the new positions for this fiscal year. The operation was not. That was just added on, and those, as you see in the yellow, those are pros and permission. So that's not. The only two that were requested to be added into this fiscal year was the chief of staff and the human resource coordinator. Yeah, human resources. Yes. Yes. I'm human and, that was at, and that was at the request of the council. That's everything that you see there was in that workshop. These were the changes that you were you, you, uh, asking. I'm not on board with the chief of staff. Okay. You said yes to human resources, though, right? I mean, it's yes. here. It yes. is here. I don't have it in my package. Okay. Somehow that makes sense. Job description. Anybody got human resources? Oh, not the job description. I'm talking about the, the organization yeah, chart and the changes. Mm -hmm. um, my, my other question um, the chief of staff, you have it 65% of the CRA. Mm -hmm. So 65% of the salary won't come apart. They don't actually spend that much time on the CRA. They're going to spend that much time that's, they're going to spend that much time in the CRA because they'll still be administering and overseeing the CRA. So that's a great call. Based off, in, in, in my in my recollection, pulling this together. What we need right now is, is the administrative oversight in that area, and that's what, that was the suggestion at that time. And, and part of the to further that conversation, if if Mr. Presley had walked into a town that was already highly functional and all of the challenges that he's having to face didn't exist, then having just him would work. But there's a lot to be done. There's a lot to be done. And it's a lot for, it's a big job for just him. You know, so it it means that he has someone that can help, or or they have their just a whole nother level. I, I personally believe that it should be granted. It should be granted. I mean, there are a lot of challenges internally and externally that need to be taken care of. But I'm going to go ahead and put it on the floor. Uh, approval of the town of Gibson organizational chart. Is there a motion? So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Um, I need to get one well talk. Yeah, okay. there, was two, there was a vote for one person, one took both ways. Yes. Um, no. Nay. Okay. Nay. Yes. Nay. Aye. All right, next item is approval of confirmation of the hiring of Mr. Demet Demetrius Presley as the Chief Administrative Officer. Is there a motion? I move. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second with discussion. It's been moved and second, Council. <coughs> um, I, I had a conversation with um, Mr. Preston today. I'm all about, I'm, I'm one of the main proponents of saying 120 days. And as I had a conversation with Mr. Preston today, um, I'm for moving the town forward with the DL, but not right now, because I don't have adequate information to make an educated decision. On May 18th, I put a request in for all the CAO, all the CRA, all the chief of police, um, positions that had been, people had put in for it. And I had one come in on the 19th, which was the CRA one, and then today I started getting the rest of the information. So right now, I can't make an educated decision on if Mr. President is the most qualified individual if I didn't get the other information that's requested. So I'm asking right now that we table this issue to um, another time. Okay. 
There's a motion on the floor in a second, so you have to move on the motion before you can bring another motion. Because it was a motion with discussion, but it was a motion and a second. So there's a motion on the floor. All right, so, so, so the motion on the floor right now is the hiring of Mr. Presley. It's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. Aye. So can I call my motion now? Yes. So I put a motion on the table that we table um, confirm confirmation of the CEO to a future date within the next 30 days. I have a question. So what is it, and this is a, a clear question, what is it that you expect to get in 30 days? And you're basing it on the resumes that you received on just a question. Councilor Daniels. Um, I don't want to comment at this time. All right. Um, it's been moved and probably second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Um, all opposed, nay. Next item on the agenda is the confirmation of the hiring of Valerie Mundy as Director of Public Works. Is there a motion? Mm -hmm. It's been moved and second. My, my standpoint is the same as I stated for the previous position. Um, All right, it's been moved and second. I, I, have oh, question. Question. I don't see any uh, public works experience on, I see a lot of engineering mm -hmm. on this resume, but no public works experience. And that's one thing that I was looking for. So we definitely needed somebody that was know about public some government with um, public works experience. Mm -hmm. And um, what's the salary range? What, what's, you want to start a, a person out at eighty two thousand? If, if you uh, see there, she does have experience with the drainage with Seminole County. She has been in the consultants area for the last uh, ten years, uh, so she has had experience in the uh, infrastructure and technical side, uh, which is public. It may not have been a, uh, the last few years have been consulted, but our earlier years were in the uh, Seminole County uh, Public Works Department. And so how many, how many people she was over in the Public Works Department over there? If I remember correctly, it was 30. In what area she was in? She was in Stonewater? Drainage. Oh, yes. Drainage? Drainage and right away. Drainage and right away. I, I have some concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Mundy um, has a very strong background in civil engineering. Uh, my concerns is that uh, review of her resume, she has currently, as listed, she has three positions up to the present. She has a position working for a global one networks she has another position as a lead civil engineer working for new city infrastructure incorporated and she has another uh, job working for the kansas city international airport I'm, I'm just trying to figure out in my mind how would a person be able to what they can do for Eatonville, how they're going to be committed to this job here in Eatonville as public works, and she has three positions someplace else. I, I just don't see how that's going to work. Um, well, I, 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 I'm looking for someone with the sewer, water, um, strong background that's going to meet the needs for what we're doing here in Eatonville. We need someone that is going to be here for a career challenge. Not someone that's just going to be here just for a little while, they've been working over here, they're working over there, they over there. I just see that being very complex and very complicated. And uh, I think we'll be just doing a disservice by um, assuming that this is going to work out for this young person. 
but I, I, she has great credentials for maybe some work somewhere else. I just don't see it being the perfect match would, for the town of Eatonville. Would you consider hearing from her as well as to hear her background in the, the actual public work side of things? You know, to her in person? She's here in person, yes. That's fine. This, this might be the work. Uh, good evening. My um, direct experience with uh, Public Works is I was Seminole County drainage engineer. I was also in charge of the land development review process for uh, Seminole County for three years. Uh, after that, I was a consultant for uh, a number of land development companies doing drainage, sewer, water as a consultant aside, um, doing the same thing as I did in uh, Public Works. Currently, um, Kansas City, I, I don't know what you're looking at, but those projects and positions that you see, those are finished positions with the exception of new city infrastructure where I am a principal um, engineering consultant. So I will always be an engineering consultant as well, but my time will be dedicated to the town of Eatonville as public work director if I'm um, if I'm accepted. Thank you. Thank you. All right, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor of confirmation of hiring Valerie Money as director of public works, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Reports? Can I have a question? I will. Go ahead. No, I will put a motion again to table the confirmation of um, the hiring of the Monday Monday for the public work team until it's time to do for maybe 30 days. Okay. Second. 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 Second and bringing this back for confirmation in 30 okay. days. And I think uh, Councilman Washington moved it. So it's been moved and seconded. All here to say aye. Aye. Aye, all of those. Okay. Who, um, I'm sorry, who, who was that that seconded? Did you second? You brought it up. Who moved it? You seconded it. You? I'm not talking to you. I'm oh. talking to you to Councilman Marlowe. Yes. yes. Now, I was, I was pointing in that direction. I should have been more specific. All right. Reports. Mr. Preston. Uh, just a, a few updates. Uh, we did do the... Uh, um, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Mayor, I thought we added an agenda for the budget adjustment. It did. It wasn't necessary without the approval of the award. I stand corrected. That's nice. Right. <laughs> So what, should I have done something with that item? No, um, it, 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 it dies automatically. Right, okay. Yeah, I was just looking at my notes and didn't want to make yeah, sure it wasn't over Thank you. Uh, just uh, to remind us or just a few things, uh, the West Kennedy water repair that was done, uh, that was taken care of, uh, we are currently working to uh, mitigate those costs with the I-4 um, project to see about those funds that are being uh, back to the town. I will say that we did take the time as we did uh, remove that, reinstall the valve to help isolate water so we have better uh, control over different areas to section off uh, water valve uh, cuts and repairs. Uh, the other thing, uh, we also are working on clean out at the park place on water pond. Uh, that's taking place. Uh, as you heard tonight from the ICR, IRC group, uh, which now we have in place, we will <coughs> convene and reconvene our Eatonville uh, Community Stakeholders Group meetings now that we have a uh, option to go with that. And then uh, also just the crime prevention plan or crime prevention sessions for um, our police department will take place on the 6th or 15th of this month. Our flyers will be going out for that information. Uh, we did have a new hire uh, for the public work service worker and a planner one. Uh, both of those positions come in with experience on those two positions that are out uh, at this point. And then also just a reminder that the state of the county's uh, address is taking place this Friday. That's all. All right, Tony. 
Yes, ma'am, I have two issues uh, tonight. The first is really by way of information. I don't know, you may know or you may not, but I want to make sure you heard it from me if you didn't know, uh, is that today I was asked by the um, executive director of the CRA to take over the uh, pursuit of the eviction for the Dixon property, and uh, we started that process today. We literally sent a notice out to be signed and served today. I wanted to make sure you knew about it because before, when it had to do with the CRA, I was basically told to stay in my own lane. I did not seek this out. It sought me out. So I just want to make sure that it's no surprise to you that I'm now handling that. Um, the second thing is next week is exciting in that we start our charter review on Tuesday. And I think you all got a memo. You may have a chance to review it for me going through Articles 1 and 2 of the charter. Uh, the one a part of the memo that I want to comment. That's a format you'll see each and every meeting. It basically tells you what the charter currently says in the sections we're talking about, and if we have a reason for discussion, and what the reasons would be in the proposed changes. But I want to make it clear that that is not a limitation on what you can bring to the table to those articles or the discussion. Those are the things that I see based on either experience here for example, the issue we had with the selection of vice mayors, one of the ones that came up in this particular round, um, or things that I've seen in other cities that might be something for you to discuss. It is not intended to be, I think it should be this way or I think it should be that way. It's, I've seen this before, you may want to address it, you may not want to, but when it says areas for discussion, what I mostly want you to understand is, it's me bringing something to the table but not to limit the discussion. If you want to co cover something else or you have a different view or some area that I don't uh, hit on and you say, well, why isn't that there? That's perfectly fine. The reason I got the memo to you this much earlier than the meeting is you had a chance to look it over yourself and see if you're satisfied because there are several areas you'll see where for me there was nothing to discuss, but you may have something to discuss and so that's fine. We do limit our meetings or try to to two hours. It's ultimately up to you guys, but we do that so we don't get worn down. And certain, some, some of the issues, you know, could be lengthy discussions, but that's what I wanted you to understand. So it is there as a kind of a guideline based on my experience, but you bring your own experience in and you're welcome to share that and, and talk to us all about it next Tuesday. All right, thank you. Um, Councilman Daniels. Um, Thank you very much for coming out this evening. Um, just a couple things. Um, looking through the budget, we have $5,000 in the budget for scholarships, and I haven't heard anything about it. I know school is out, so I want to know where we stand on how we're going to fulfill, how we're going to give scholarships this year. Um, my next thing is I have been requesting um, documents and documents. Um, can't be found, can't be recovered and all that. So right now in my report, I want to make a motion to authorize CAO to hire a company to recover and also analyze um, these emails and equipment to recover these documents. We have to get a second or something. I'm trying to ask a question. Yeah, I mean, I, I do. Is that administrative? I, it, 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 it is. It could be. In other words, you could have been initiated or can initiate it under whatever. I don't know what your total budgetary authority is, but whatever the cost is. See, the one unknown in this request is how much it's going to cost. So I think in terms of, of proceeding, the first thing would be, okay, we've identified one or two or three companies that can do this kind of work, and we've got this amount of money that looks like it's going to cost. Because um, without a price tag, then you're basically saying, find somebody and get it done. And I don't know. I have no idea. I know this area exists. I know what they do. I don't know how much they charge for what they do. And I could even point you to some companies, but I wouldn't have a clue how much they charge to do it. But if it was in your level of authority, yes, you could do it. I just don't know how much it would be, so I don't know whether it would be in that level. So should I make this a um, authorized CEO to request for a quote? Uh, it would well. It would allow you all to then have a number when you before you say, okay, now start spending. Okay, I would say my motion. So my motion is to authorize CEO to request for quotes 
of the elite elite vendors to analyze our IT systems, emails, and equipment to recover documents and other sensitive items. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. Have I not been trying to get to some emails? It's a, G, it's a Gmail system that we don't have administration authority to. Am I, right? Am I correct? Mm-hmm. So that's not even a motion. Let's do it. At, you so know, we'll, we'll find out how much it costs. Can we follow and then we have a session there? Do you but know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm asking about? Well, I'm getting ready to ask Miss. King next because Mrs. King. Yes. I did ask you to ask because you brought this up the last time you were there. You were missing emails, so I said please get with Councilman Daniels to see what he's missing. Yes. Can, can we move it? Then we can discuss it in that. I think that's more fair. So then we can bring Miss King and have other councilors. We can go ahead and move the motion. And what I'm saying, up. we don't even need a motion. Can you just do it? <laughs> it's administrative can to get proposals. Well, yeah, the answer is yes, is, but again, I'm, I don't want to put words in Mr. Preston's mouth, it. but he, he, he follows your agenda. If you guys aren't interested in going doing it, unless he thinks it's necessary, then there's no reason for him to spend this time doing it. There's a lot going on here that you know in this town that keep him busy, I know. And so, but if that's it, your priority, then it becomes his priority. So that's really what I think he would be looking for, just putting words in your mouth, but that's what I'm thinking. No, I just need the direction if that's what if you want me to do. I'm sorry, I just need to know if that's what the council Yes, I do have a question. So you need to tell me that I mean there are emails we can't at that step. That's what I'm that's what I'm confused. Like there are emails we can't get to or emails we don't have. I'm I'm confused, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Because of the, the turnover in certain areas there was not and in and, and administration changes, certain documents were not uh, released to the administration to pull or have access to. So we need actually to, to proceed with some type of IT recovery process to make sure we have all of those documents. Uh, now on, on the town side? The C- CRA and town. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, so you say CRA and town. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm, I'm familiar with the CRA. A little bit familiar with town. So you, you're saying that files are missing on the, on the town side? Is that what you're <laughs> <laughs> There makes sense. I don't know. Oh, so when documents are requested and staff goes to proceed to look for them, there's been areas where information has not been accessible. So I, I'm, 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 how, how is that? Are they deleted? They, they deleted? That, that's it's, what it's, the it's, IT would try to tell you. What, one of the, the, let me just put it in context. I have some background only from having spoken earlier to uh, uh, Councilman Daniels, um, Councilman Marlon Daniels. And it is that we don't know what we don't know. So, for example, was it a hack? Maybe. Were things intentionally deleted? Maybe. Were they ever even existing? Don't really know. Maybe, because when they're not there, you don't know whether they existed and were taken away or they never existed. So what what an IT person could do, if they were ever on the system, typically, they're able to go back and say, yeah, somebody tried to erase it, but, you know, the way electronics work, you can find them if they're there. And so, but it, it, would, it would help answer the question, or one of those questions I asked, was it a hack? Was it somebody intentionally deleting? Were there not any records to begin with? Or was it on some other computer? No, again, when this was brought to my attention, I said, I, I don't even know where to start right now. I wouldn't even know where to look because I don't know which direction to hit it. <coughs> Well, we do know from when we put on our CRA hacks that that computer, according to CRA current CRA director, that it was erased. That's files that were intentionally erased for whatever reason. Wait, who's confirming that? The CRA director didn't say she couldn't find files and it was like it was erased. Am I, am I mistaken, board? Yeah, what, what did she say? What did she no, say? they didn't find the file. She didn't know what it was at. So she didn't know what it was at. But so if they're not going there, so then we have it to the file. It was paper files. Where were those files off? It was uh, paper files. Okay. Okay. It, it was just paper. Was it was paper. When a person leaves, they should leave everything right there. So they're gone. Oh, you mean something was No, it's not paper. It's 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 paper. It's
she said she can't find him because the computer is is blank. No. So okay, I, I what happened was, was happened before before that. That. so we know this one. We have to have some investigation to something to find find us. something is missing, something is wrong, mm -hmm. and it just the computer just don't erase itself. Okay. All right. Okay. Don't won't know until you get a consultant. I will say so, this as a. As sort of an adjunct to just figuring out what may have happened or didn't, we don't know. In this case, a bigger issue to consider that will clearly have budgetary impacts is how do we not have this happen again? How do we get a such situation where there's automatic backup so that if somebody a week from now is mad, it's too bad because it's already backed up mm -hmm. overnight or on a daily basis. Our own firm, as an example, you have several backups, one of which now is the Dropbox, but it's not the only one. So that if one of our backups fails, we got another place to go. And so there's a way to do that, too. I'm not that guy. I just write the checks over my office. But but that's something you probably want to look at, too. Um, are you, is that it? Was I? Is that it? So are you saying you're handling it? I am saying it right now. We can get the proposals. Okay, so can we have that within the next 30 days or something? Get the proposals? Because my, my issue is we sit up here and we talk about stuff and we ask for action, but then there's no follow through, and then three to four months later we come back and we got the same issue still there. And what? Give me an example. I know it's late, but give me an example. I mean, because we're putting stuff out in the in, in the air, air. But give me an example. But Mr. Preston, would you please explain the proposals? Is there anything else, Council? Um, the night has been well spent, and I hope I'll come back here. Council, one minute. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you, Council. Council, I have a couple of things um, on the closure of. West Kennedy, East Kennedy, what happened there? I mean, why was the one away road? What happened with that trans that traffic? It was a water main repair. But why was one away? We couldn't open up another lane to go east to west. That was the proposed MOT plan, and there was no other way to open up uh, traffic at that point. You had a whole three lanes of. I mean, we had the other lane. Yeah, lane is not. They could have took. I mean, for the. I mean, it, it took a lot of people out of the way. Cause I would be upset. I got back in town. I'm like. What's, what's this? It's only go one way. So I had to three miles out the way to get to my house. It was an emergency main, main repair. But I mean, we got to do better than that because it's, it's, I think it's at least four lanes right there. But that's, I had to ride my bike down because I didn't want to drive my car back around again. But then another thing, um, we got a bear in Lake Lovely. I saw the bear Saturday night. I'm riding back home and here's a four foot bear walking down Carver, just chilling. So we have a bear sighting in Lake Lovely. And I did talk to a couple of neighbors. Lake Lovely, the states. So we do, I mean, I've seen the one on Lake Yola. They've been showing that on news. But this one here, I followed it there. And I was like, where are you going? You know? So, you know, so that's that's my, I've been sitting on people ring cams. But I seen it personally Saturday night. So I'm like people where Chief, there's a bear in Lake Lake somewhere. Where uh, I went to Maitland. I walked to the wall. Is that it? You know. And that's all I have. My fault. Also, can we address the issue with Mr. Jimmy on those we brought up from again, and I think we need to report back to make sure we address that issue right away. All right, Vice President. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, that water leak, is that the one I was asking about, Mr. President? So that yes, sir. Um, I had another citizen say, I don't know if it was raining on the side. I don't know if it was. I didn't take a look at it when I was focused on the one that was on the ground. I think it said it's leaking in, they don't want it to face whatever it is on the side of the overpass. It's something to take a look at. Uh, the floors look nice. Uh, Really nice out there in the foyer. Really nice. Uh, if I can get a, we have monies that were designated for uh, the former mayor, or former administration had money allocated for water meters, and I'm wondering where we are in that process of replacing the water meters. And for the citizens that don't know, it was going to be like a, uh, you can read them by passing by the wanted, 
uh, we had that all allocated with some funds. And we're wanting, I'm wanting, we want to get that started. There was also money issue for a uh, band. We always talk about youth deterrence. Uh, I remember as a youngster in Council Washington, whether we had a band back in the day, and the former administration had money allocated for a band. And I was wondering where we are in that process. It can be the uh, you, Mr. Presley, or or Matt Bartman, can give me an update on that. Um, <clears throat> and where are we are uh, that pro uh, that uh, uh, presentation uh, gave some ideas. Uh, on flooding, is it possible that we can look at since it's hurricane season and maybe the lake behind Kelly Park, maybe we can empty it a little bit. I don't know where we can take the excess water just to be ahead of the game, just in case we get a hurricane so it doesn't flood those citizens that are in the back of Kelly Park. Just a suggestion because I know that it just floods. Uh, and that's my report. Have a good night, everyone. I got one question. Those drums are, I think Macedonia had those drums for that, for that drum corps? I think they were new. Huh? I think they were new. <coughs> the new drums. We had new drums. We had drums that was bought with weed and seed money back in the day, and they just said that in Macedonia. That's a wash of That is probably so dry right <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. All right. I mean, you buy heads on them. You can hear it on them. figure that out. The wood is good, probably. Um, <laughs> congratulations to Dr. and Mrs. Dr. and Mr. Thomas for opening the Thomas Leadership Academy. Went to that ribbon cutting. Uh, Committee 100 super organization has supported the law enforcement officers and law enforcement departments in many municipalities. Um, very nice luncheon. Uh, the $5,000 scholarship, honestly, with everything else going on, um, I, 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 I have forgotten about that scholarship. But but I but it brings me to this point: Travel and Leisure gives for your scholarships. And it's like pulling teeth to get them to, to get the students and the parents of one accord to come and go through the process of even getting four year scholarships. So, um, but I'll, I'll look into that. There's an egg smell, a rotten egg smell out there. Maybe it was just me. It's out when I go down Kennedy right here. So I, I, don't, I don't know where that's coming from. Uh, Ms., Mrs. King, before everyone leaves here. What is it that I'm missing? Is there, are there documents that are requesting me that I have not provided? There are documents that Councilman Marlon Daniels has requested. From me? From his request, there are documents that he have yet to receive. There have been probably, and I'm just, I don't know because all requests don't come through my office. So I can't really speak to what may be still open. So I've asked him, we have spoken, and he's supposed to retrieve all of his requests and send them back to me so I can do a comparison between what I received and what others have received. Because sometimes requests go to other departments that never come to the clerk's office. So I can't really speak to it. Because the only thing that you said that you were missing in the, that Saturday meeting, I think, was some information about a former employee leaving and you wanted to know, have that information. If there's something else that I am the custodian of, mm -hmm. then let me know what it is. I'll write it down. So, so ma'am, I'll tell you, um, I've asked for, since 2020, anyone who's applied for CAO, CRA, um, Public Works, Chief of Police, and the offer letters of anybody who went into those positions, and today, um, Whatever they had, I, I received today, but all of a sudden, no applications are available for chief of police. None of that stuff is available. No one knows where it's at or anything. The offer letters, none, none of that stuff can be retrieved for some apparent reason. You, you took the hard copies be scanned and sent to you. That's what you're asking for. If, if it's hard electronic, that's just my request. Miss Robinson. And okay. That's been since May 18. Oh, but that's not a. Is there something else? Because I'm y'all talking as though, and and I'm saying, and I want to say this here right now because you're here. It's it sounds like it's like a a. a I, I had the same problem with getting unclaimed information. Okay. Got, I got four sheets of paper, but that's not four papers, not with unclaimed. But the resumes have already been given so. like a while ago. So you're asking for those same documents. 
I try to go into my email, find what they were um, well, said. Well, I, I'll tell you what's ironic, man. On today, some of the documents I received that I had asked for before, all of a sudden I start seeing new names that wasn't provided to me back then, so that's a red flag to me. I, I don't know. Other people who had applied for CAO back then, when I received the information back then, all of a sudden today, the information I received, there's another four names that never appeared here before. That's a, that's a huge red flag. My flag is red. All right. <laughs> hey, Councilman Washington, I did receive some today from Enclave. I can't personally give it to you, but Ms. King has for Enclave and the Lake West Center. It's Washington. probably what you already have. <laughs> four pieces? What um, people? I would go sign off for it. Um, um, everybody have a good night. Nine oh six, move that and meet me adjourned. Okay. Yes, we'll Miss King, I was informed you needed my name.